watching. Hopefully you're going to be able to get a lot of nice insights and some ideas from this. So yes, welcome to my session, which is the ROI Renaissance. This is about best practices for social media. That's what I'm going to be taking you through today. There's some different things you can do to help with your, sorry, social media advertising, to help with your social media advertising. So just very quickly, a little bit about me, about what I do. So I run a company called Pickaroons. Now, Pickaroons means Pyro, and we are a content creation agency built on pirate principles. I could do a whole nother workshop and a whole nother day where I bore you about what those pirate principles are, what it means to be a pirate. But what I'll do at the most basic is explain that pirates weren't saints, but what they did in the time they existed in, they were very disruptive. They disrupted the status quo and the way things were done. For example, the one I always like to tell people is if you lost your arm and you were in the Navy, they couldn't use you anymore. So they have to throw you out in the street. Sorry, we can't use you anymore. And the pirates, well, that's not quite right. So if you lose an arm, we'll give you two gold pieces. If you lose an eye, we'll give you one gold piece. And they did other things similar where they also had fair pay. You could vote a captain out. They had same-sex marriage on their ships. And it wasn't because they were particularly woke. It wasn't because they were particularly wanting to help. It was more because they wanted to turn a profit for themselves. And they knew that by doing things in a better way, that would help. Now, what then happened was a lot of the Navy, where they were losing people to become pirates, they adopted those principles themselves. So things like fair pay, things like health um, injury compensation, those were adopted by the masses after pirates sort of challenged the status quo and the way things are done. Now, I'm not going to say that we're challenging anything quite on that level at Pickaroons, but what we try and do is challenge the way that most people are using their online marketing in terms of likes, followers, empty metrics. What I'm much more interested in is how do we increase sales, leads, donations, and actually help your business. So the aim of what hopefully I'll be able to help you with today and put some of that mindset into what we're gonna be talking about is using your social media advertising in a way that doesn't just get a load more people seeing you, but not clicking through and purchasing. It doesn't get a load more people aware of you, but not actually attending your location or starting business leads with you or investing, whatever your objectives may be. So hopefully that will come through today if that's sort of the thing that I want to try and change. The outline of this session, we're going to start with why. Why have I called it the ROI Renaissance? Then we're going to go into the poetic framework. I'm going to do a bit of a framework which just explains to you where this paid marketing sits within the wider marketing mix. Because if we understand the why, that's going to make the what make a lot more sense and a lot easier. Then we're just going to spend a little bit of time what you're currently doing. That's when you'll have the opportunity to share what you're doing, what your potential challenges are, where you've been at. We can just do that through the chat box as well. And then we're going to do best practices. That's where I'll just share a list of different best practices, things you can take that you can then go and apply. And hopefully will just help tweak what you're currently doing. When it comes to social media advertising, to general marketing, these things can't all be taught in, let's say, an hour. But what I hope I can do is give you enough nuggets of information that just some of them will help tweak what you're currently doing or give you some inspiration to start soon doing some particular things. Then at the end, we'll just have takeaway and question time. So this session will be around an hour and we're going to have plenty of time for questions. Hopefully the actual me taking you through should take half an hour, 40 minutes or so. So have plenty of time for those that are here to actually get into your particular questions bounce any and all of them off of me. So if at any point anything doesn't make sense, please do put it in the chat. Just let me know so I can explain it. Otherwise, if it's a general question, please hold on to that till the end and then we can go through. And also just one thing, sorry, we will be sharing these slides afterwards as well. So you will be getting all of these as notes that you can use. So to start with, why do we need a renaissance? And here is a renaissance painting of me which my designer mocked up when i said can you make something as a poster for this lovely talk i'm going to be doing and they added me into a renaissance painting so that was the notion of why renaissance why did we think of this 
And the reason was that when we say ROI, we're talking about return on investment. And we need a renaissance in that when it comes to paid advertising, because there's so many organizations, there's so many marketing professionals who are teaching others that here's how we can get as many eyeballs as possible. And where we need that renaissance is making sure that the money you're spending, I don't know the exact budgets you're spending, but unless if you're a massive, massive brand spending millions a year on paid marketing, we want to be as smart as possible with our investment and make sure you're actually getting a return of investment on that. And there's so many people out there using it and using their paid advertising to not get it quite to that level. So we'll start with what you get told to measure. This in general is what we see a lot of advice is we want to look at the eyeballs, vanity metrics, how many people saw it. Whereas what I'm much more interested in is how many people loved what you did, how many people loved the advert that you posted out, how many people engaged with it. Many are missing that opportunity for genuine engagement. And that's where we're going to be able to start to actually get some results that are going to lead to what we must measure, which is the outcome, the return of investment. How many sales did we get? How many leads did we get? If you're looking for investment, how much investment did you get? Did you find any, are you running a campaign to try and find particular partners who could potentially help you in the supply chain? Again, it's measuring the pounds saved or the pounds earned within that. I see there's a couple of points in the chat, so we can open those quickly. Ah, it's just welcoming. Lovely. So here's just a nice breakdown of those three different types of measurement that we normally see. We see the exposure, which I don't doubt. We still do want to have a look at that. We do want to see how is it performing? How many people is it getting in front of? But it's more that engagement I'm interested in, that how many people clicked on your ad? How many people viewed the video? Not just viewed it, but how many of them viewed it the whole way through? How many comments did your ad get? How much time spent engaging with it? Did they get shares? Did people go through to the website? And then for me, the big one is the effectiveness. What was the behavior change or the purchase of your products? That's where we can actually start to go, how, did, how is this effective? Because I don't know about you, if I was to put out an ad campaign and only 10 people saw it, but all 10 of them ended up purchasing from me, I'd be quite happy with that campaign over another campaign where a million people saw it and only one of them purchased from me. So that's always my aim in the mindset. I hope that makes sense in what I'm hoping to show. So the poetic framework is a really nice framework just for showing the different types of marketing that we may do in terms of the channels. So you've got paid, which is where you purchase the placement. You purchase the add on Google social media it might even be offline as well tv ads print ads you've then got earn own sorry own is those which you own they belong to you they're your own social media channels you haven't paid to promote the content you just created it organically and posted that it might be your own email newsletter your own website then we've got earned that might be where a news site a newspaper someone else a blogger writes about you that's something that we saw if we can build through relationships. But that's a really useful media, but again, not so that we can necessarily control. We've got teamwork, and that's where we have two different brands promoting each other, sometimes more. That might be affiliates, it might be partners, it might be influencers, and that's where you might collaborate to create a resource, a webinar. We've got interactive, which might be experiential when you're at events, meeting new people, giving out merchandise. Maybe if you have an onboarding for a new client, a new customer, maybe there's someone who's going to come and visit your location more frequently. That's another opportunity. And then we've got the community. That might be that you run your own social media community. You might have a specific group that meets at your location. You might be part of a specific group, a referral program. So these are just the different types of channels and the ways that we can get the framework out, what it is we're going to say. But what we're going to concentrate on today is the paid. Those where we're buying our placements. And for me, that's why the ROI is so important. Because whereas some of the others are a bit more free, this is one when we're actually putting our money and our budget in there to try and get those results. And you'll see there's three types here. There's a tradition, traditional, 
your TV out of home, which is the OOH, that might be a billboard, a poster, you've got radio, you've got print ads, digital, which is what we're going to concentrate more on today. That's your social media, maybe podcast ad, maybe a display ad, which is when you're searching on Google, the adverts you see. Search as well, when you actually search on Google and you see the text that recommends a website. And then we've got emerging. These are things like branded content, when you see specific brands produce maybe a film, sponsored media, and digital content, which might be like a long online digital game or something they've created. So what we're going to be concentrating on today is that digital side, that social media. So hopefully all of that makes sense in terms of just a bit of a scene setter of where does this fit within our wider marketing mix and the tasks that we're doing? Because if we're doing our ads right, we want to then drive people to our website, to our social media pages. And that's where we've got more ongoing content that we can own ourselves. But the ads, this is why it's the ROI renaissance, is we need to make sure we're getting a return of investment on that. The others, we can try things, but this is the one when actually it's about us putting money in and wanting to make sure we get money out. Before mm. I carry on with some of the best practices, really interested to know what you're currently doing. What ads are you currently running? What's your current, are you running Google ads? Are you putting a lot of budget? You haven't got to say the exact amount, but if you could just drop it to the chat, I'll give you a minute or so just to write some things down. Just what are you currently doing when it comes to your paid ads? That might be Google search. It might be that you're boosting posts on your page. And if you are, how frequently, what type of posts are they? It might be that you are running an actual ad campaign on Facebook, on LinkedIn, TikTok. If so, is it a video? Is it an image? I'm just interested to know what type of things are we doing? got no paid ads yet don't currently do any paid ads lovely so hopefully this will be really helpful and this will help just get you started with what those next steps are because one of my things that i always found quite interesting was we wouldn't have expected and with no offense meant to anyone here we wouldn't have expected people in small medium businesses or even large businesses whose job wasn't to be a marketer to launch with a tv ad to launch with a radio ad in the past so I find it very interesting that now all of a sudden, for some of us, it's almost made to feel like, oh, why are we not running social media ads when it's not the easiest thing to do? And that's why hopefully it's almost a good thing that if you're not doing ads yet, hopefully what I'll give you today will give you the starting block and some of the mindset to give you that confidence to go and do that. And then when you do that, you can actually create some ads that are going to work. And like I said, we're not going to, in this one hour, do a complete run through that's going to make you be able to set up the ad straight away. I didn't want to use the time of actually talking you through the software. What we are going to do is go through everything that's going to enable you to go and do the final thing you need to do to set up the ad straight away. So the whole outcome of today and the last thing I'm going to share is the resources that talk you through the actual Go here on the page, click this, do that. That's not what we'll do today, and that'll be the next step for you. But today, what you're going to be able to do is take these references to that and go, right, now I know I need to be looking at this type of thing. This is what I need to set up. So yeah, thank you for that input. That's great to know that then we can actually really get things going from the beginning and get a good ROI. So best practices. What I'm going to do is just go through a list of some different best practices and then at the end of this, we'll have time just for questions, about to jump ideas around. But these are some things that I want you to keep in mind. And like we said, this whole presentation will be shared with you that you can use as a checklist when it comes to doing your campaigns. So the first one is you've got to define your budget. How much are you going to spend? And it really is a how long's a piece of string? Because we want to spend some. I'd say we always want to be spending at least 100 on a campaign. So just make sure that we get it in front of people. But we've got to define how much are we going to spend right now? How much are we then hoping to spend in the future? What I'd like to do is, and this is where it's great of 
At Picaroons, we haven't had that budget to run our own paid campaigns yet. They're multiple for clients, but for us, we said, look, at the moment, that's not our priority. But when it is, I know that we're going to have a marketing pot and 10% of that marketing pot is going to be spent on our online ads. So that might be the way you do it as well, is not just saying here's a figure, but actually this percentage of our revenue next year, we will put towards paid ads for the following year. So keep that in mind of defining what your budget is, but set realistic budgets. Don't push yourself, but go, okay, here's what we're going to start with. And you can do it as a phased approach as well. You might say for month one, we're going to run this budget. And then in, if that works, we're going to run 10% of whatever comes back to us back into the next budget. So do you think with that, allocate those budgets based on performance. It's great because you're not already doing this, but don't boost your posts unless if you really need to. A lot of times people will boost posts because it's one of the easiest ways to do it because you'll see this button that says boost post on your Facebook post or on some of the other platforms. The problem with it is it offers limited audience targeting. So what a boosted post will be is imagine if you go, here's my post, you boost it just means more people see it. Whereas what we want to be doing is setting up over here a campaign that then you target towards specific audiences. So the only time I'd recommend boosting a post, which is essentially like saying, do you want more people who already follow you to see this post? Do you want to get this in front of a few more people? But it won't be targeted. It will just be, let's get it out there, push it up. That's when you'll use the boost. So when I would say it's useful, is if you know that you've got a really strong following, if you've got a really good audience and you have a specific campaign, a specific offer, a specific deal, and you'd like to get in front of them, then boosting is useful. Also, it's really useful if you've seen a post, again, that's really effective. If you put up a post organically on your page, on any of your social media, that you then see is getting loads of engagement, loads of comments, loads of people going through to your website maybe, then you know, okay, this is a good post, it's performed really well, then you could consider boosting it. But I'd always suggest with the budget you've got, running a specific campaign, as opposed to just boosting a post that's already on the feed. The next thing is you wanna know your audience inside out. You want to understand your target audience's demographics, their interest, their behaviors, their pain points, what they resonate with. Because if you're not setting up ads that target a person, when you don't have those multi-million pound budgets, you'll be wasting that money that's spent. So an example of an organization I worked with was called Pure OT, and they were a gluten-free oat milk. And we did some paid ads for them and they wanted to launch in a way that they would get involved with um, people that loved coffee. So instead of just targeting anyone that has an interest in coffee, we looked at what we called the tastemakers, the people that would influence those who like coffee and actually get them involved. So we started off by looking at anyone who had a specific job title related to working in a coffee shop, being an owner of a coffee shop. And we also looked at anyone who was already following or had an interest in alternative milks to dairy. Because by doing that, we were able to say, actually, if we just target anyone that likes coffee, you might get an advert in front of people that have no interest in using a gluten-free oat milk, which is very, very niche. So let's make sure we target based on that. And that's what helped us make sure we were maximizing the budget. So have a think about who they are, where they spend time, what type of things they follow, what type of things they do. And that will help you in terms of creating that audience profile. And this isn't just for your social media advertising either. This will just help you, of course, all matters of the business. The next one is set clear objectives. We spoke earlier about those effectiveness metrics. Define those specific measurable goals for your campaign. Is it we want to get X amount of people to our website? Do we want to get an increase in sales? Do we want to get more leads? Because by setting those clear objectives, when we speak later about your call to actions that you write, if, you're call to act, if you want to get more people to your website, 
then we need to make sure that the button on the ad when you have that choice says visit here, visit the website here or find out more here. This is how we'll make sure that everything links up is by you having the clear objectives of what you'd like to achieve from the campaign. And that's where I'd say for the ROI purposes, always make sure it's landed back to your business objectives. The next one is choose the right platform. You'll see here there's loads of different platforms. I know some of them, Zoom might not count as an advertising platform, but still the point is there's a lot of platforms. So if you're trying to run ads across all of them, and you only have a few hundred pound budget, you're going to be only spending a few pounds a day on each one and you won't get the most out of it. So using what we know about the audience, where are they spending more time? And also, which platforms do you feel more comfortable using? When I show you at the end the resources, you'll see that to actually run ads on each platform, you do have to do slightly different things on each platform. So if you're again trying to learn all of them, it's going to spread you a lot thinner. So choose the right platform or just two or three of them. What's useful about Facebook Ads Manager is then you can do Facebook and Instagram. And you can manage them all through the one platform. This is the most important for me of craft compelling ad copy and visuals. This was an organization we worked with called Ambius, and it was about creating a visual that's going to stand out, that's going to gather that interest from the target audience and make sure that the copy relates to what you want them to do. This is another reason why boosted posts aren't very useful, because boosted posts, sometimes you don't get to actually craft that specific campaign. And then what you want to do is leverage a B testing. So you'll see here, we didn't just launch with one visual. We had two, one with an animal, one with a person. So what this helped us do, and this is definitely something you want to be able to do and why you need at least 100 to sort of be doing this is you want to be able to dedicate a split of the budget to both. So you can then see which one drives more. For us, we were able to find out from this that actually the animal was driving more. The animal was getting more people interested. Now, that just gives us the insight that we should use more animal visuals in our general advertising as well, in our social media posts, on our website, because we know that's what the audience likes. So this is where you can take different ideas test them together, but then you can also take learnings from those. What you want to be doing as well is optimizing your landing page. So what I mean by that is, whether it is through the network, it is through what you're doing with OFM, it is through your own page, make sure that when people land on your page, it links with the campaign. If the campaign says is all about encouraging people to shop with you. If I then land on your website and the first thing I see from that campaign, so I click on the campaign because I like it, I go to your website. If the first thing I see isn't related to how I can shop, buy here, go to the cart here, then I might leave the website because it doesn't link with what we're trying to do. So make sure that your landing page, where people end up, and it might be that they go straight through to a different site for you. There might be a different shopping site you're related to. Wherever that is, it's about making sure that's optimized that when someone's clicked on the ad, it continues their journey through towards purchasing from you. Incorporate social proof in your ads. You don't just have to think up creative. You might just get customer testimonials. You might just get reviews. There might be photos or videos that people have taken of your produce when they've received it, of your product, whatever that may be, your service, use those. Use those in your advertising and incorporate that social proof that it's working. You need to segment your audience. So what I mean by that is, do you remember when I said before about the campaign we did with Pure OT? And I spoke about we had coffee shop owners, but we also have those that have an interest in coffee and an interest in alternative milks. So if we have had the same ads running to both of them, You'll see here this offer where it says without segmentation, you have one offer and you really only get one of those type of people through. Whereas with segmentation, if you have three different types of person and you run three different types of ad for each of them, it might be the same visual, but it might just be that the copy is slightly different based on their particular pain point, their particular interest. That's again, another way that you're gonna get the most out of your budget. 
you want to implement retargeting. So a lot of things that I speak about here, if you're not sure how to do them, they do feel slightly complicated when you first look them up, but Google how to set up retargeting on my website, how to set up retargeting on my, because what you'll then be able to do is, you know, when you go shopping sometimes for a present for someone on a site that has nothing to do with your personal interests. And then for three weeks afterwards, every time you go on your social media, you see an advert for that website. That's because what that website is able to do is pick up that you were there and then they can retarget you with an advert. So what they can do is they can do that for six months. It gives you the data on people. So it doesn't tell you who the person was. What it does is just say, okay, here is an audience or a member. You can retarget to anyone who was on your site in the last six months with this ad. So what you can do then is you can have a slightly different ad because you know that they already know who you are. They know, we know that they already know what you're about. They've already been on your site. So definitely look at setting up retargeting. And if you don't have a lot of budget, the best audience you can always set up is your retargeted audience. Because in terms of that, what you can look at is you know they already know you. So they're already further down the line and more likely to engage with you when you don't have loads of that budget. You've got to monitor and analyze your performance. So all of the platforms have, and there's specific tools sometimes, you can monitor them all on things like HubSpot, cost a bit more but you can look into those that's h-u-b-s-p-o-t but otherwise you can look at getting specific dashboards on each platform where you can have a look at what's the success how many people saw it how many clicks did it get how much has been spent because what you want to be doing is do you remember when i said about the a b testing you want to be able to switch on or off ads that are working or on you want to be able to go look this one ad is getting loads of clicks and loads of sales Whereas this ad isn't getting as many. So do you know what? We've got a budget of 800 pounds running over four weeks. Now we're seeing on week two that this ad isn't working as well as the other one. Let's switch it off. I'd always say give it a week or two for it to properly prove itself to you. Almost give it a chance. But after a couple of weeks, then you can really start to get that data to help you. Use geo-targeting. You can use location-based targeting. Again, I don't know enough about each of your businesses, but if you're based in a local area, you don't want to be running an advert that's going to reach people on the other side of the country. So make sure when it comes to that selection in your ads, if you are location based, you're geo targeting to make sure only people in a specific area see it. A lot of marketing specialists will look at sort of the holy grail is how many people can we get to see the advert when we create our audiences? Because a lot of the platforms will tell you roughly how many people will see it. Whereas I'm always more focused on actually how little can we get? How focused of an audience can we get? Because then we know we're going to get more out of our spend. You can use something called lookalike audiences. And again, this is a lot I'm giving you today, especially if you haven't been running ads and doing things before. So at any point, if you're not sure, do just put these into Google. Lookalike audiences explain. Guide to lookalike audiences. But what I'd like to explain to you today it is, is you've got a custom audience. So you might create an audience of people that you know um, have a specific behavior, a specific like, or as we said before, it might be that the retargeting, you use that where you can get all the people that have been on your website in the last six months, and you can create a lookalike audience, which again, it won't tell you their characteristics and traits. All it will do is it will on Facebook it will copy the audience you had here and go, OK, let's take all of their traits and mindset and the type of places they follow and what they do. And we'll create a similar audience for you, which is a new audience. So look as well. Say look at look at look alike, which is a bit of a mouthful for me to say. Look at look alike audiences as well. That's really useful. Build strong call to action. Again, this is one to maybe Google some specific to what you do if you've been playing around with ChatGPT, with the AI software, you could put into ChatGPT, say to it, here's what our business is about, here's what we do. We'd like to create some social media adverts. Give us a list of the best call to actions. And you could even say, give us a list of the best captions. Say, give me 20 caption options I can do with call to actions to drive people to our website. 
So these might be things like sign up here, find out more here, visit the website, purchase now, buy now. There's so many different types. And that's where a really good copywriter can help you make one specific. But if you want ones that are more generic, you can just look it up and that will probably hopefully give you some ideas. But without knowing your specific business and challenge, I wouldn't want to say to you the exact call to actions to have. You want to test different ad formats. We don't just want to be putting out video. We want to be putting out maybe video try and also some images. Maybe eventually you can try the carousel ads, which they are the ones when sometimes, you know, you scroll through and it's like seven or eight posts next to each other. That's the carousel ads. So try different ad formats as well over time with budget, because then you can start to figure out what works best. They say it takes two years to build a brand and it's definitely going to take you time from when you first run ads till you really get it exactly where you want it to be in terms of what you're delivering. Stay consistent with your branding. You want to make sure that your cover photo on your social profile, your social media posts, your website, they all look the same as the ad. You want to have that same look and feel, even if it's just imagery, even if it's not with specific colors. You just want to make sure that when people are seeing your ad, if they don't click on the button that says buy now, but they click on your profile, what they then see is an interest to them and links. Engage with comments. If there are people commenting on your ad, make sure to comment back. You haven't got to be so speedy that it's within two minutes, but maybe make sure that within a couple of days, you've commented and you've carried on that conversation. Because the fact that someone's taken time to comment is a really strong indication that they want to talk to you. They want to have a conversation with you and your brand. And then finally, this is the one that I really find is useful. Start, stop, continue. I've just given you quite a bit of the stuff there to get on with. As we said, it's a bit of a learning process. You've got to get going, get moving, get adding things in. And what we like to do with all of our clients is something which is start, stop, continue. And what that is, is every month, and you might do it every three months, every six months, we review our organic social media. But whenever we do ads, we also do reports where we say start, stop, continue. What should we start doing that we're not already doing? What should we stop doing that we've tried doing that isn't working? And what should we continue doing? So using that example of Ambius that I showed you before, you might say, right, we should start trying some different copy. We should start trying video because we haven't tried that yet. We should stop using images with images with people in. That's what we're going to stop doing because it's not working as well. We might go, Atty, do you know what? We've run five different call to actions on our ads. And whenever we say buy now, it never works. Whereas when we say apply now, that does work. So we'll say stop saying buy now. Continue, we'll say continue using images of animals. Continue using apply now. And this will just help you over time try new things, the ideas, things you might have wanted to try, you've got the budget to try, but it also help you stop where you're not spending well. And remember what we said at the beginning about always linking it back to the ROI, to that return of investment. I want you to think there's a type of content that's getting you a million people seeing you, but not one of them has gone to your website and purchased you or followed you or done any good action then that's not going to be valuable to us. Then that content is not something we should take a learning from. Whereas if you've got a piece of content where only 100 people saw it, but 90 of them bought from you, that's something of, okay, continue using this type of content. But perhaps the start might say putting more budget behind it. So I hope that makes sense in terms of some best practices. Thank you for staying with me so far. We'll come right to the end of it now before we get some questions. So when we share this with you, I've also got a load of resources here. This is where you can go and learn more. So we've got Facebook Ads Guide, Google Ads Help Center, where they actually have information that will talk to you on the exact how. Because what I've talked you through today is more the mindset, more the things that will help you with the planning, the understanding. Whereas on these pages and these YouTube channels, HubSpot Academy is really useful. That's where you'll actually learn the click here, update it here, how to manually use this software. So before we go into questions, I would love to know just some of your takeaways because I gave you a lot there. 
And I do not expect you to say you're going to go away and action all of it straight away. But what would be your one or two things based on what I've said today, that are big takeaways for you that you can use? Could you please just drop them in the chat so I can see them? Um, and then, yeah, after that, we'll jump onto questions. I hope that was useful in terms of me giving you some best practices, some thinking, some things you can do. But yeah, I'd love to see what are some of your takeaways, what are some of those things that you feel like you can go and do now or soon after you've done maybe a bit more reading if needed. Targeted geographic ads, yes, love it. And that's the thing, sometimes that is the case that we'll put an ad out and we think it's doing great, but then we find, oh, actually there's a slight different way we can do that and we were wasting our money over there. A-B testing using chat GPT, yeah, I mean, look, I run a marketing agency. I'm very good at marketing, but I'm not good at writing. And I accept that. So what I try and do is I use chat GPT for those final tweaks. So I might say, here's my idea for the campaign, but I'll then turn around and say, chat GPT, can you please write me all the 25 captions? Now from those 25 captions, I don't then use them all, but that helps me choose which ones I'm going to use. So retargeting, yeah, retargeting is so useful. I um, mean, Leslie, yeah, thanks for the A-B testing. A-B testing is so good because if you're going to spend the money, you might as well spend on a couple of things and see which one works. Because as I said, you can take those and use those for your organic social learning as well. And so the retargeting, yeah, I mean, retargeting is so useful just to know these people already know who we are. So that means your marketing message doesn't need to be, hey, here's who we are. It's more of a reminder of purchase now. Or don't forget to. And yeah, getting to know the audiences really helps with that. Gina said, yeah, the A-B testing. Matt said, creating a well-planned out, consistent user experience. Yeah. Leslie said, I personally find retargeting ads very annoying as a consumer. Me too, Leslie. I find them so annoying. And that is the point of well-planned out, compelling ad copy. Because it's so annoying when it's like, Hey, you forgot to buy this. 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 And I kind of, well, I never wanted to buy it. I just clicked on your site because it was the wrong link. And now you're chasing me around the internet. So that's the point of why we want to have well thought out campaigns. I mean, if we're going to target someone with a retargeting, it's not going to be a really hard sale. It's going to be more of a, here's an offer we've got on this week. Here's a deal we've got. Or, Here's a type of food that's in season. Did you know? You've got that. It's it's we're coming at them with useful information that because we know they already know us, we don't need to go, hey, don't forget us. Here's who we are. We need to go, hey, remember us. And here's something we can offer you and add that value. They said, most people I bought it, you already need one. Yeah, yeah, not true for food sales. Exactly. And that's where we can make the message more personal to us. And I know this isn't a creative session. I've got other creative sessions I do. But especially when it's related to food, if we land with value, if you know someone's been on your site, and when, when you get more, I don't want to overcomplicate it, when you get more specific with certain retargeting campaigns, sometimes when we have our specialists, they'll do it based on a page. So you might be able to, and this is more complicated to run, just to let you know it is a possibility. There might be a specific page on your website where you're selling strawberries a specific product if you know someone's been on that you already know they've got an interest in strawberries so we could then do a retargeting campaign to them where we talk about recipes using strawberries so we're not going hey here's strawberries don't forget to buy your strawberries we're going here's a recipe using strawberries and it feels more natural to them it's going to feel like something they can actually use so yeah thank you for that and hope that helps as well so yeah thank you all for sharing those takeaways that's really great and now on to my favorite part, questions. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to open up the screen. I hope that was really useful for you. I know it was a lot. I do hope that made sense. I hope that gave you some ideas. And otherwise, please fire away. Let me know any and all questions. We've got the rest of the time now to go through anything and everything. No such thing as a stupid question. Let's bounce around ideas. And obviously, if someone asks a question, if someone else has something to input, please do feel free to turn your microphone off and ask it or just put it straight onto the chat. Um, I was wondering about um, 
the money side of things. Yeah. Because uh, I'm I sorry I came in a bit late. Um, but um, so you you were mentioning about hundred pounds minimum. Um, do you mean that for one ad or for one AB test or what what in relation to what? Yeah, thanks, Leslie. So it's a hard one with ad campaigns because we've also got to think of the space that we're in. So the more competitive the space, so if we were just to target anyone in London that has an interest in food, you're then joining every single other brand that has a lot more budget than us to target people who have an interest in food. Whereas if you make a really hyper-targeted campaign, that might be in a specific location, it might be to a specific audience trait. One thing I always like to do is target based on um, people who are following a specific page already. Then you'll get more bang for your buck with that money that you spend. So I would always say for your overall campaign, at least 100, at least like the, it is one of those, the nature is the more we can spend, the better. But at least 100 for the overall campaign. But then again, you've got that variable of, if you're doing 100 for a campaign, we don't want that running for 100 days. Because if you're for 100 days, that's only one pound per day. And then if you're A-B testing, let's say two ads, that's then only 50p per day on each ad. Then if we're going to different channels, so do you see what I mean by it's better to be targeted with your campaign? But you know what? We're going to run a Facebook campaign with these two ads. And for one week, we're going to run these. So if you, let's say, only had 100, you'd be better to do it around a specific campaign that you've got that you think, look, this is going to launch and get more people. Whereas ideally, you'd go, you know, ideally, you'd go unlimited budget. So of 100, you need to be hyper-targeted with your planning, really, really specific. 500 to 1,000, you still want to be specific, but it allows you to maybe run the ads for a little bit longer, get it in front of a few more people, run a few different versions on a few different platforms. And then sort of once you're 1,000 to 5,000, then you can start looking at, we almost do, let's say in a month, we'd almost want to be spending at least 3,000 across a month for most of our clients. There is case by case dependent because Ambius, who I used as an example before, I know that their spending was in the hundreds, but it was for a very targeted campaign. And that was to try and get the final remaining people to sign up for their consultation course. So it's very targeted. It was very clear who they were doing. They had a very clear creative, a very clear message, and they ended up getting a really high return on investment. So that's why I call it here the ROI, is I'm more interested in what results can you get for the amount you spend. So I hope that helps. But yeah, with the with the money and the budget, it's more of a the more you can get, the better. But I'd say anything less than a hundred, you're not really going to see any result from. From a hundred around a hundred, you've got to be really targeted in your outcome, very clear what you want to achieve and what you want to do. So I hope yeah, that I mean, we're, yeah, we're quite small. I mean, we would only spend like hundred a year, maybe. So we could only do one ad. But exactly, you know, but you'd have to be focused about it. Exactly. So if you're saying to me you only spend 100 a year, I would go, let's do that on one thing. And what is that thing? Let's make sure that it's a clear outcome for the business. So it's also it's also maybe sometimes part of the wider marketing mix. So if you were to say um, you have a specific I mean, can you think of a specific time of the year that you maybe need a big push on a specific campaign or a specific thing? Would there be a, everyone purchases something at Christmas for their Christmas meal? Is there a, anything like that in the year? Uh, well, well, Christmas is important. I think for us, it would be as we grow, if we need to grow X amount because we're paying for a van or something, then it would be more about, you know, what else is happening in the background and, if if we now have capacity to get a load more customers it would be probably around that i think if we have yeah if we can increase capacity therefore let's do an ad and get loads more people yeah exactly more. so i think it's, it's that it's planning it's planning so for ambios theirs was at the end we're not going to run an ad at the beginning of the course because we don't have enough budget to do that at the beginning of us trying to get people on the course we're going to send out emails 
We're going to do our networking we do. We're going to post organically on social media. We're going to try and get referrals. We're going to reach out to people we spoke to before. And in the last week, when we've only got two places left, then we're going to run the ad campaign just to fill those final two places. And we're going to put everything into that. We already know because we've been testing on our social media and speaking with people that this is the best copy that works. So it's almost with those budgets sometimes, you don't have to, you don't have as much time and budget to plan something that you don't know is going to work. You want to have more of an idea of, we think this is good creative, we think this is going to work, we're going to put this out there. Whereas big brands sometimes, they'll just put paid spend behind everything. Whereas we need to be more targeted with those lower budgets and going, this is what we're going to do, who we're going to target. Again, for Ambius, we were saying, look, we could target anyone that has an in an interest in conservation but actually we don't want that because that's too large if we've only got a small budget we're going to be really targeted with it just to make sure we get the right message in front of the right people so yeah i hope that helped yeah so when you're a b testing um how long would you do that for before you just put all your money into the one that's working do you know what? if it was around 100 i would just run with both as one campaign and then what you know is that for the next campaign, you can do it again next time. That's what I'd suggest is almost let them both run. And then next year, or if there's another chance to do it sooner, you can take the learnings from this campaign and run it more. I'd say, I'd say you want to be spending in the thousands to be turning off the ads during the campaign. Unless if you really see that one of them is like reaching zero people. I'd say for that sort of for the, in the hundreds budget, we want to be actually just running them both at the same time. And I'd say really do A, B tests. Sometimes we'll do A, B, C, D, E, F, G testing. It's like just A, B. So, and also we can, I know this is about paid advertising this, this um, session, but you can test with people organically before you'd put it as a paid ad. Mm. So you might come up with four versions and you speak to mentors, to people in your network, to friends, to other people in your organization. And you say, right, which one of these do you think works best? Which one? But remember, we say, which one would make you click through to the website? Which one would make you do this? So you can almost do a bit of a real life A-B test before you then actually go and test that. And I've got a whole nother session, which I do on strategy. And in that, we talk about strategy. One of the things we say is speaking to your customers and understanding what's their pain point. What is the things that frustrate them? What are those things? And then you know. So for Ambius, we did a lot of work. So actually, we do all these different conservation things. There's many reasons why people sign up for our course. But the majority is people are looking to move into a career in nature and conservation. And I said, okay, but is it nature or is it conservation they're looking to move into a career? Which one's the more overused word? And this is where it's great is because now you can play around with things like chat GPT, say which one of these two is a better wording is used more and find out which one's better. But we were saying, okay, which one's better? And they told me that the one that's better is conservation. That covers everything. Great. So now we know conservation. And then it was, right, have you got any high quality images that will stand out that feature nature? And then they gave... 20 images and we went through and right let's use those two they're the best ones so if you know someone with a good creative eye as well you could speak to them and say right which one of these is best so it's almost without massive budgets do more testing before you push the ads live and maybe even put put the versions of the ads as um like organic social media posts and then you can see which one of those works which one of those gets more engagement and then off of that you can then use that to promote it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, thanks. No worries. Any other questions? Feel free to put them in the chat box as well. Hopefully that's a good sign. Yeah, that was really interesting, just sort of hearing you talk through the methodology of how you get to the point of pay, because we've, never ran any paid for advertising we're um, a community garden um, and a community interest company um, but we just 
And at the moment, we're in a position where we're 100% grant funded. Um, we used to have a deli that uh, in town, which we closed. So we're looking at um, finding a way of getting back um, a little bit of control over the finances rather than going yeah. from one grant fund to another. And the sort of areas we're doing, we're doing talks and seminars and workshops around food and nutrition and growing. Um, and we're also trying to relaunch a veg scheme and bag locally. But it's because we haven't done it. It's it's more that sort of the this process. Yeah, yeah, the retrospectively. Kind of deciding where to start from, what the standpoints um and we currently I mean, use what, 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 Facebook oh, sorry, Mary. at the moment and Facebook kind of has the biggest engagement. Um and we're one that into other sort of um third sector organizations. So we share content around a lot, but we still struggle to reach some of the demographics that we'd like to reach. And that might probably because we're using the wrong platforms. We don't have much engagement under the age of twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's also the targeting point because Using what you said there, because I've worked with a few community gardens. So let's say that you have a specific, when you said you have one of your talks, are the talks at your garden, at your location? They they have been a mixture. Um, we've, we've run talks in community settings around the county, um, at trade shows, at festivals. Okay. Um, we and, and are any of them only... have any of them brought you client because like, if this is what I mean by we've got to be selective with it. If you said, you know what, every year this one talk that we do at our location always brings the movers and shakers around the local area. So what I would then say is, okay, well, if that's the case, if you only had a little bit of budget, put that behind putting a paid ad that targets anyone in the local area that's got an interest in organic food or is following something so they could be following another veg box scheme something else in the local area or even just a general larger veg box scheme they live in your local area because if we would say someone's following i don't know like a hello fresh or something and they live in your local area we can say i reckon they'll have an interest in what it is you do because we already know they're interested in an element of fresh food so you could then target to them saying we have an event next Saturday or two Saturdays time, please come down. Because then what you're doing is you're using your paid ad to drive them to your physical space, which will then give you the chance to speak to them face-to-face -face and be more likely to convert them into potentially like an actual sale, if that makes sense. Mm. And it is, or if you have the veg boxes, it might be, or for any of you, if you've got a specific food, it might be a buy one, get one free. Let's think what, what's going to make someone click on this ad to get a voucher where you get buy one and you get one free or you get or you get one free box from us. Because, again, now you're giving a reason to click, a reason to engage. It's like an invite. What you want from ads, what we said before about how annoying it is when there's retargeting follows you around the Internet. I always remember the one time retargeting. I really appreciated it. And it was I put a specific hoodie in a basket or whatever, and I decided I didn't want it. And then a week later, it came out and said, right, this hoodie's now dropped in price. Would you be interested? I was like, yeah, actually, do you know what? I would, because that was the thing that stopped me buying it before, is it was too expensive. So it's thinking, what's that actual value that we're giving them? So instead of just turning up and going, hey, here's who we are, it's like, hey, here's a recipe you can use. Here's a voucher for a free veg box. Here's an invite to our community space. That's how we start to actually use them or, or specific campaign. It's Christmas. Where are you purchasing your X product? Come to us. We've got that for you. It's using that campaign mindset to be very smart with the budget we've got. Any other questions? Any other thoughts? But yeah, I hope that was helpful, Mary, because I realize that was off of your your lovely ideas of the different things you're doing, but it's when you're doing quite a few, as you said, you sometimes got to start planning now for what would an ad look like? Like I already know for us, we had an about us video pick rooms made. 
And I was like, oh, that's what I'd love to be our advert, is that. But right now, we're not putting our budget towards that. In that time since, we've made even more work. And I now want a new About Us video, but I also want it to only be 20 seconds long. Because I know that the longer video is just too much for people. So over time, I've been thinking about it, that now we'll sh hopefully have soon the budget to spend. We can start to do it that way. So yes, yeah, that planning. Any other questions, any other thoughts? That's a very good sign. Well, look, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope that was useful. Anyone who's watching this on a recording, I hope this is useful as well. And yeah, we'll send over the slides so you've got them. Um, and yeah, please do connect me on social media when we send the slides over. Um, and yeah, hope to see you at uh, yeah, talk soon or something else soon. But yeah, best of luck with it all and hope this was useful. Thanks, Thank everyone. you so much, James. No worries. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank Bye bye. You.